and, and Zach Seward. So we are here with a whole bevy of great guests, and I'm going to kick it to my co-host, Lee, to kick it off. Lee, you ready for this thing? Yeah, I'm really excited. All right, so... Um, go for it. So, you know, the, the thing we're talking about here is simple, Lee. You know, if cryptocurrencies are going to play a significant role in a changing economy, I mean, you know the question, what is it? Who are the people that are actually using this and what are they using it for? That's right. So for the next 15 minutes, we're going to be exploring that question, talking about whether Bitcoin can become a global currency in a time of financial upheaval. We'll be starting out by talking to two entrepreneurs that have made Bitcoin a central part of their business. Then we'll consider the geopolitical factors that make the Middle East a compelling hotbed for crypto adoption. Then we go to the wild world of sports and see how one athlete is tokenizing his salary. And last but certainly not least, a conversation with Bitcoin billionaires Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss. Pretty solid lineup, Lee. Let's get to this thing. Ready? Yeah. So we're going to start out with Michelle Fan, beauty mogul, and Lolly CEO Alex Edelman. His startup allows people to earn Bitcoin rewards just by shopping on regular websites. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us. How are things? Hi. Hey, hey, how are you all doing? <laughs> oh, we're doing well, man. So the, the Bitcoin halving just happened. We, uh, we got the news out. We're feeling good. And we're looking forward to talking to you folks for the next bit. So thanks for joining us. Uh, Michelle, I'm going to start with you. Um, you know, you're known for makeup tutorials. You're obviously a beauty mogul. Uh, that's what people know you for. As it relates to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, you know, what's the business opportunity that you saw for educating folks about Bitcoin adoption? I would say when I first started on YouTube, um, in the beauty space, there was just a lot of mystery behind beauty. Uh, makeup artists would have their secrets. And so the average consumer uh, were not as educated about makeup techniques compared to today, 10 years later after YouTube. And so I could actually see the same thing happening in uh, the crypto space, specifically in uh, Bitcoin, because um, especially right now, we're in very interesting historic times where like the feds, they're just printing so much money. I think like six trillion dollars of just a stimulus package and so i think a lot of people now are just questioning what money is and what money means to them and i think the more they start questioning and wanting to learn and understand more about money the more they're going to be interested in sound money like bitcoin hard money like bitcoin and gold um so i think it's just going to be uh ex extremely like interesting times that we're going to see right now where um one um the decentralization of just money in general and um, similar to like YouTube and uh, beauty where YouTube decentralized content for the average consumer. Anyone could technically have their own TV show. Everyone technically could have their own um, empire in that sense. And uh, same thing with beauty. Beauty back then, there was a lot of um, the barrier to entry was much higher. You had retailers who were it was a, pretty much a closed market. Retailers kind of controlled what consumers were seeing and understanding and buying and enters in. Um, beauty influencers and they kind of disrupted that model and they uh, democratize what beauty means. Beauty is not just a one face fits all, like it's very uh, diverse. Um, and so I see uh, something like Bitcoin just really changing that space. And that's why I'm really excited about partnering with Lolly on this too, because a lot of my uh, viewers and audience, they want to learn more about Bitcoin. They are interested in it, but one, maybe they might not um, have the money to invest in it right away, to buy any right away. And two, I think a lot of them are just confused with so much misinformation in this space. And so I feel like um, the best I can do is just offer, um, just offer like a better way to teach and share my experiences of Bitcoin. Um, because I don't think there's one authoritative figure in the space. I think most Bitcoiners can agree that we're all just learning and every single day we're learning more and more about this. Um, and uh, yeah, it's exciting times. Alex, what do you think it means when you talk about adoption for Bitcoin? Does that mean people holding their own keys or does it mean something else? No, I think we took an early stance where we believe that Bitcoin adoption is not going to start where people are going to hold their private keys. Um, I think that in order to uh, get into Bitcoin, you have to sort of see the upside of it. Why is it better money? Um, and so for a lot of people, I think that they're going to come in through custodial wallets. And then once they start to ask questions about why is Bitcoin better than the money that they're used to, then they start to see uh, the advantages of Bitcoin. And then they, we look at it as like, 
going down the funnel into like graduating into owning private keys, uh, main maintaining cold storage and, and better security uh, protocols and, and really letting the masses truly own their money, which is the beauty of Bitcoin. Gotcha. Yeah, and uh, Alex, first of all, you guys had some news today. You announced a, a funding round that had participation from your fellow consensus distributed guest, Michelle Fan. Um, I think that's so, first of all, uh, congrats on the news. Um, Michelle, I wanted to go to you. Uh, this is one of your first venture investments, and I wanted to kind of get a, get a better feel. You kind of alluded to it a little bit in your last response, but I wanted to get a better feel for why you think investing in a company like Lolly is attractive. What, like what, what, what's the value proposition of this Bitcoin reward startup that we're talking to right now? I've always been a believer in investing in the future, whether it was investing my time on building my YouTube channel um, or investing in a startup like Ipsy. Um, and in this case with Lolly, I just saw um, just incredible opportunity in seeing what they were able to build. And also um, just understanding as a user myself, um, how can I get interested more in Bitcoin? Like you actually have to have it to understand. You, if you have like a few Satoshis, you can really understand um, what it is and how special it is. And um, like I mentioned before, I was alluding before about how a lot of my audience, like maybe they don't want to take, they don't want to, it's so high risk for them because Bitcoin can be a very volatile market. Um, how can they still make an investment in it without um, bleeding too much of their money into it? And so I think that's why Lolly brought such an incredible solution to bring mass adoption is you're not really changing your habits. Like you're still buying and shopping, but you're being rewarded in Satoshis. And this can be a great entry level way for people to just learn more about um, Bitcoin and they can learn more about um finding a wallet, storing it in a wallet, understanding about private keys, understanding about what money is without having to really disrupt um, so much of their lifestyle because they're still shopping. Um, and so when I saw that it, what the product was and just how amazing Alex and his team are, I just knew like this is where, really where I want to invest my um, attention. And also I, I want to really um, help the, my audience basically like earn Satoshi's like, Hey, you know, you're still shopping. Like even with my brand M cosmetics, we're also going to have, um, Lolly, um, we're going to partner with Lolly so that, uh, people who want to purchase M cosmetics, they can still earn Satoshi's. Michelle, what have you heard from your fans when they tell you about their experiences buying or using Bitcoin for the first time? Well, a lot of them, well, first off, like a lot of them just thanked me. Um, they were just mentioning about how they had no idea. They At first, they thought it was a scam. I think that's something that a lot of people, when they first hear Bitcoin, because there, there's just so much misinformation about it online. Um, and so their initial reaction was, oh, I thought it was a scam or, oh, I thought it was fake money. But then when I got to learn more and I, I try my best not to give any financial advice because, you know, like it's, that's, that's very personal and you should seek a financial advisor for that. But the best I can do is recommend like books that I'm reading. So the Bitcoin Standard by Safe Dean Amos is a great uh, foundation to start off with. Um, and so I recommend that. And a lot of my audience, like they were able to like buy his book and read and understand what Bitcoin is. And so they tell me like, yeah, you know, I decided to invest like 1% of my portfolio in Bitcoin. And they, I think they bought it when it dipped. I think when it dipped like around 6,000, maybe even like 4,000, a lot of them bought um, and so they were just thanking me about um, sharing with them and kind of showing that this is a space that they should learn more about because uh, it's really the future. And that's something that I've always been interested in investing my time in is the future. Alex, uh, I'm going to ask you, which, you know, new Bitcoin users who are stacking sats for the first time, you know, which sites are they turning to? I'm really curious about that. Yeah, great question. So uh, we have a pretty diverse set. I mean, one of our strategies was to cover uh, every category that we could from the beginning. Um, so part of that was how do you give people as many interactions with Bitcoin um, on sites that they already would have gone to? So for those of you that aren't familiar with Lolly, um, you download the Chrome extension. Uh, it's also available for Firefox and you go to shop as you normally would. And when you go to a site, it pops up and it says, would you like to earn Bitcoin? And so in the case of M Cosmetics, you would go to M Cosmetics, you would see it there, you would, you would earn your Bitcoin, and then uh, it goes into your Lolly wallet. And so it's this really easy way of like teaching people. And what we've seen is, is like a lot of, um, a lot of our traffic post COVID has been around essentials. So grocery has been a big category for us, uh, vitamins, um, work from home, um, electronics, 
um, a lot of essentials have, have been uh, the dominant category. And then before COVID, uh, travel was a, a big piece of our business as well. And we expect that to return um, probably like, you know, when, when this all blows over. Gotcha. And in addition to travel, if I remember correctly, brands like Sephora, like different beauty retailers were big um, earners for you guys, correct? Correct. Um, so one of the things I think we're really excited about is like the ratio of, of our user base looks very different than the data that we see from just standard uh, Bitcoin um, owners um, and, and holders of the past. So a lot of the data that we saw was that less than 4% of Bitcoin um, users were female. And so one of the things that we wanted to do is like, you know, we were building this for, you know, our moms, our sisters. Um, how do we make it accessible for everybody so that, you know, wealth doesn't go to the same hands as it, that, it, that it used to? Um, how do we give, make it for everybody? And so a lot of that is, is making um, online shopping. Mean, online shopping is for everybody. And uh, the majority of online shoppers are female. So we're seeing about 30% of our users are female today, and we'd like to get that to over 50% uh, as soon as possible. So we're bringing on great new partners like M Cosmetics. Uh, Sephora has been a great partner of ours as well. Uh, so a lot of uh, more female-focused merchants uh, have done very well on the platform and have made um, stacking sats, earning Bitcoin, uh, very approachable to both men and women. Got it. We have so, a lot uh, to think about. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you think about this stuff and, it, you know, you think about the tech bubble, specifically the crypto bubble being typically male. Um, you know, Michelle, you're sort of on the front lines of this narrative shift. What do you find resonates with your viewers when you talk to them about protecting their purchasing power, uh, potentially by making investments in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin? Um, I would say a, a lot of them, a lot of the viewers who've been watching me since the beginning, you know, a lot of them were either in elementary school, middle school or early college days. And so now um, majority of them are either about to graduate from college and they're about to go into the working force or uh, most of them, I would say they already have a, a job, they have a career and they want to diversify their portfolio. They are interested in growing their money um, and saving it and, and growing it. And so I think a lot of them are just wondering like, hey, what else can I invest in besides I can't afford a house right now? You know, I think like right now, a lot of them, they just can't afford mortgages for houses. So what are, uh, what, what are other ways for them to grow their money? And so this is why I think they're really interested in what I'm investing in. Because what's interesting about my story is that I started literally from the bottom. Like my family, uh, they're immigrants. Um, they had no money. And so I grew up really thinking, well, I have to work really hard for the rest of my life um, if I want to generate any type of generational uh, wealth for the rest of my family. And um, that being said, I think I had this mindset of seeking opportunities and finding um, different industries where I can maybe make some meaningful impact in. And so that's why like with YouTube and beauty, um, I was able to see that. And in this case, um, now that I've been able to build my wealth and I'm diversifying it. I think a lot of my viewers who saw me film filming from a webcam in my my bedroom, and I was a college student in debt. I think a lot of them are interested in uh, um, following like any uh, any advice I'm sharing from my personal experience. And that being said, um, the best thing I can really offer is um, if when you're buying satoshis, when you're stacking sats. Um, it's benefiting everyone in the space. It's not you're not just investing in a money that uh, is controlled by, it's not, it's not like government money. Uh, Bitcoin was never forced on anyone. Um, Bitcoin isn't, uh, is not a government approved money, yet it still works. So I think a lot of them are really interested in that. So that being said, um, I would say like, I get so many DMs from so many people who um, they want to learn more and they're always asking me like, what's the next thing they should do. And so I think like what Alex has built with Lolly, he just makes it easier for people to stack sats and um, the barrier to entry is much lower. Awesome. Hey, Alex, I had a question. Uh, you mentioned, you know, the Lolly wallet. What's the data looking like on uh, how many people keep their Satoshis with Lolly and how many ultimately transfer them off platform to another exchange or to a, you know, a personal hardware wallet? What's the breakdown look like for the users of your platform? Um, it's, it actually has surprised us. It's, it's over 99% keep it in their lolly wallet. So we have yeah. some education to do, I think yeah. over time of, uh, teaching people about private keys. Um, right now, I think that 
So the average um, amount of Bitcoin is around $35 per user. Uh, so people are earning a, a significant amount of, of money um, and you know, on, uh, using Lolly. And so it's not, it's not an insignificant amount, but uh, at the same time, I think a lot of people trust, um, trust us at this point um, to hold that amount of money. Um, when that uh, you know, number goes up over time, um, I think that we can do even more education around edu you know, educating people about cold storage and, and holding their keys. Um, but right now it's like, we don't want to complicate the matter. Like so far the number's gone up, like since we launched, uh, Bitcoin was around like 3,600, 3,800 when people really started to first earn. And then now, you know, now we're up to 9,000. So for most people, they're, like they're coming in and they're looking at Lolly as being better than, you know, cash back applications. And so far that number has gone up two to three X um, over the, the life cycle that they've used Lolly. And so they're fine keeping it in their Lolly wallet. But as that number continues to go up and they've stacked more sats, uh, we think that, you know, it's important to teach people about uh, what private key management uh, looks like. Well, that's fantastic to hear. A lot of good data points here. So thank you for sharing that stuff, Alex. Uh, we're going to wrap it. Uh, we're going to leave it on that note. Uh, we're going to move on to the next thing. But I just wanted to thank you for joining us, you know, folks watching. You just uh, heard from Makeup Entrepreneur and Bitcoin Educator Michelle Fan and Alex Edelman, who is the CEO of the Bitcoin Reward Startup. Lolly, thanks so much for being part of Coin uh, Consensus Distributed today. Appreciate it. Thank you for having Thanks, us. Thank you, everyone. All right. So we are going to shift gears a little bit.